Welcome to this new series where we are going to show the performance of different directional strategies. In this case, we are going to start with a simple strategy using Bollinger Bands and MACD. This strategy was running in Binance for almost two weeks until we stopped to analyze the results. Let's review now the agenda for this session. In the introduction, we are going to review the triple barrier method. Then we are going to review the components that are needed to run directional strategies. Also, we're going to explain how the strategy that we are going to implement with Bank D and Bolling Air Bands works. And lastly, we're going to analyze the results of the two weeks that the bot was running. Let's recap the logic behind the triple barrier method. If you want more details, I would recommend you the book Advances in Financial Machine Learning that has a chapter of labeling where this method is explained. And how this method works? We have three barriers. One vertical barrier, that is the time limit, and two horizontal barriers that are the take profit and stop loss, depending if the position is short or long. What we are looking for, we are going to create a position and our position will have a signal that will be valid for X minutes. That's our time limit. If the position reaches the take profit before the time limit, the position is closed by take profit. If the position reaches the stop loss before the time limit, is going to be executed by stop loss. And if neither the stop loss or neither the take profit was reached, it will be closed by time limit at that time and will, can be a profit or can be a loss depending on the return that you have at that time. Let's review which are the components involved in the directional framework. In one hand, we have the signals. The signals are going to be calculated based on technical indicators that we are going to apply to the candles. And the candles are available because we have a new component in the code base called candles feed that for now has feeds for Binance and Binance Perpetuals. So once we have a signal coming from a trading pair, we, the strategy will analyze. Do I have an executor active? Okay, if I have an executor that is active, I'm not going to do anything. If I don't have any executor, I will create a new position executor. That the position executor is a smart component that also was introduced recently in Hummingbot that we handle the position for us. So the inputs for the position executor are going to be the entry price, the type of the order that we want to use, the take profit in percentage, the stop loss in percentage, the amount. Well, there are a lot of configurations that you can check later on on the code. But essentially, once you create the position executor, this component will be like self-managed and you don't have to do nothing with it. Let's review the configuration of the strategy that we are using. The trading pair is 8 BUSD. The exchange is Binance. The interval of the candles is 3 minutes. The indicators that we are using are the MACD with fast EMA of 21 and slow of 42 and Bollinger Bands of 100 periods. The order amount is $15 and the take profit is 1.5 times standard deviation and stop loss is 0 0.75 times the standard deviation. It's important to notice that instead of using a fixed value for stop loss and take profit, we are using the standard deviation. Later, when we are going to see the graph, you will understand why. The time limit is 55 minutes. This also can be variable based on the standard deviation or the opportunity that we have. But for now, let's stick with 55 minutes. So let's review the rules to enter in a long position. The percentage of the Bollinger Band has to be 0 0.2. The MACD H, this is the histogram of the MACD, has to be greater than 0. And the MACD has to be lower than 0. The two conditions of the MACD means that a cross happened. For a short position, the percentage of the Bollinger Band has to be greater than 0 0.8. The MACD H lower than 0 and the MACD higher than zero. This is the same as the long position, but the cross is for a short position. Now we are going to review this condition on the graph. Lastly, we have the strategy. If you want to check the code is on the description, but it's very similar to the simple directional strategy that you already have in the code base. And also in the description, you will find a fee level that Binance offers 
and you will understand why I used BUSD instead of USDT because the fees are lower. Let's review now the strategy on trading view. This is a trading bird that we are using, Ape BUSD. And here we have the MACD where this has to be 21 and 42. And as you can see here, the Bollinger Bands are 100 and two standard deviations. That's what we are using. And essentially the rules that we define are, we are going to enter only if the Bollinger Band in, in long position, only if the Bollinger Band is lower than 0 0.2, this is the percentage of the Bollinger Band. If you want, you can see Bollinger, we can add the Bollinger Bands here to the graph and you will see that this value, well, instead of 20, let's add the Bollinger Bands of 100. And you will see that this value of the percentage corresponds of where is located the price related to the band. Uh, and it's very good to have it normalize it so you don't have to analyze uh, a lot of things. We can just understand uh, where is the price located. So we're going to remove this band again. So in this example, this condition is met. We are here in all this example, all this, all this part for the Bollinger Band will be like short because as you can see, it's all below the 0 0.2. But the MACD is not crossed because remember that to enter in a long position, the histogram has to be positive. That is what we code. So all these parts, the histogram of the MACD is negative. The first time that the histogram becomes positive is here when we have this cross. So in this point, our logic will enter in the position. This is just right now where we are recording the video. So this can be probably a good opportunity to enter. So as you can see here, we have the cross. And if we check, we can have an opportunity of 1.84%. This is very interesting. Uh, this is why also I think that using the standard deviation is much more better than selecting just a fixed take profit and stop loss, because depending on the size of the Bollinger Band at that moment, the opportunity can be higher or lower. Check this scenario. Here we have 1% at maximum. Here we have also like a 0 0.88, 1% or, well, the values are like different. Here we have a drop of 3%. So this means that the volatility is much more higher. If we put again the Bollinger Bands, you will see that right now, the Bollinger Bands of 100 periods, that's what we are using, increase the size a lot here. And here we have very low, the size of the Bollinger Band here is very low. So depending on where we are, and which is the volatility of that moment, the movements are higher. So if the band is high, is big, we want to have like more risk. And that's like the, the goal that we are going to have by making this take profit and stop loss dynamic. So, well, that's essentially how the strategy works. If you check this scenario, here we have another cross. This will be another long, so, well, the opportunity here was like 4%, but remember that we only put 55 minutes, so it will be closing here. So we are going to lose all this opportunity. In this case, the cross is for a short. Check that here we have the condition. The Wollinger Band is above 0 0.8 and the MACD crosses here. So here we have another short that was a good signal, but well, now, this is good to let you know how this works, like using TradingView, but now we are going to analyze the results of the real bot. We run the bot for almost two weeks. The number of trades was 334. The trading volume was 4,498 USD. The realized PNL was 0 0.48 
USD and the fees that we pay was $1, $1.1. That's why the net return is negative and we lose money. As you can see, the net return is not so much and we have a bot running for almost two weeks with a lot of confidence of the usage. Now it's time to see how we can tweak the bot and which are the further improvements that we can create in order to make it more profitable. The first graph shows a distribution of closing uh, executors based on the last status. As you can see, it's independent of long or short. We have like the same distribution of take profit, time limit and stop loss. But what we can see is that we have a much more stop losses than take profits. So probably the multipliers that we are selecting can be one thing to improve. In the second graph, we can see for the take profit that it's the same of almost the same, the exits for long and short positions. One interesting thing is that the stop loss is much more higher on the long positions and overall the quantity of long positions was higher than short positions because all the columns or uh, all the red columns are like greater than the ones, the, the blue columns. But that is essentially what we can extract for this second graph. Now let's review the signals on the OHLC. For the OHLC analysis, I would like to give credits to Mr. Drugman, that is a community member that is very excited about these directional strategies. And he created a, this visualization based on the CSV that the strategy is storing. So here you can see all the entries of the bot, then if you want, you can make your own analysis. What I found is I have to tweak the values of the take profit and stop loss multipliers since the take profit multipliers is too far away and it's never reached. Also, I would like to apply a threshold of the MACD to consider a signal value. For example, the MACD has to be greater than X value in order to enter in a position. Overall, I think that the strategy is not bad since the trade PL was positive and the fees were the ones that makes us lose money. But overall, to be the first iteration, I think that is a very good product. The last thing that I would like to mention is that the Telegram integration was very helpful since I received messages from the bot every time that a new position was created or every time that I would like to know the stats of the bot, like how many entries I have, how many executors are running, and all that information that you can find in the formal status. So uh, I, will, I hope that you like this video and you can create your directional strategy and share your results.